Yeah. So they are no longer a garden in the city, but the city in the garden, which is just a beautiful conception of how you can change and be. Uh, we should be doing something like that. Million trees planting program. We are doing million, ten million trees cutting program. That's all all the cities are doing. So because I think government is the biggest uh, land owner in India, and then you realize that's a human rights issue because there are uh, people who are being paid almost nothing who are eating out a job. I think in schools today we don't teach that. today you know i'm sitting in a in a hotel right now and we are having this conversation and when i look out of the hotel you know there are huge concrete buildings in in this complex and however there is also a lot of effort in building pla- uh, you know planting uh, small trees and you know uh, getting greenery around the concrete area you know is that enough you know in the name of constructions and the name of development you know whatever the, or do you think there should be more effort because if you look at countries like singapore right which is uh, developed significantly but if you look at the amount of greenery and they've maintained that that creates that equilibrium do you think that is required seriously to be looked at what can be done to change that scenario a lot of different things and there are a number of different countries are experimenting like yourself singapore is a fantastic example because you know they used to have this idea of a garden city bangalore called itself a garden city which is where you are now and it's no longer that singapore went from the garden city concept to say they are now a city in a garden right Yeah. So they are no longer a garden in the city, but the city in the garden, which is just a beautiful conception of how you can change and be a powerhouse of economic growth. Yeah. We could do a lot, you know. Then New York, uh, Baltimore, many of these cities had million tree planting programs in Los Angeles about twenty years ago, and they work brilliantly. We should be doing something like that. Million trees planting program. We are doing million, ten million trees cutting program. That's all all the cities are doing. So yeah. it's we have to do that. Where we are planting, it seems very strange, but where the surprise is because, um, so for instance, take and take Bangalore. They are not planting trees on roads because they say activists. Tomorrow we will have to widen the road, so the idea is infinite road widening. And they say activists will protest, so let's just not plant trees. Once we cut the trees, let's take them off the road. So yeah. the law thinking is completely lopsided. What could we do? Corporates could do a lot. People could do a lot. not as much as the government and i'll come back to that every time because i think government is the biggest uh, land owner in india and therefore and we really need their help to work at scale that said while pushing them i think there's a lot that each of us could do corporates for instance you could plant trees across this concreted campus many many more what if every you know we're talking about for instance uh, rooftop uh, painting with white paint to reduce air pollution what if we just turned everything into rooftop gardens and started growing your own vegetables people would get lo- local food your food miles would go you would make people reconnect to nature like you're saying your uh, mother and your son that yep. reconnection to nature is what we have lost right once you reconnect to nature what uh, so people have found with research i'll give you a simple example someone was looking at uh, in bombay uh, what happens to people who do rooftop gardening and there's a yep. lot of criticism that it's an elite thing that so only wealthy people do this and why why would uh, why should uh, anybody bother but she tra- this is very interesting transformation you start with rooftop garden then you realize you need manure so you buy a manure and it's often cow manure but you see plastic then you see that cows are eating plastic you get very worried about that then it becomes an animal rights issue then you get more into the uh, plastic uh, garbage then you realize that's a human rights issue because there are uh, people who are being paid almost nothing who are eating out a job then you start working on their behalf and then you agitate on their rights so it's about people becoming much more actually conscious societally once you do something as simple as i think nature connects us to many things so on that that's what the people front corporates could do a lot you know i was walking looking at a beautiful video that uh, was in some european city but uh, i think somewhere in spain where what they've done is you have these high rise apartments and what they've done is they've taken nets and tied them from one roof to another wow. and put some kind of mud but it's it's something which is not very heavy and uh, can actually support the growth of plants and seeded plants across you know this riot of flowers which also cleans the skip pollution wow. because these plants are the kind that not only give you flowers and make you feel good but also are actually soaking up the pollution and cleaning up the air and there is very interesting system where the water that is caught or the moisture even the with the dew that is caught in the morning from the roofs trickles down and actually man it takes care of these nets so it's very it's low intensive main and it's not at all intensive in terms of maintenance and it uh, shades people from urban heat island effects so it's doing multiple things at the same time so i think these are there are many we have to We can restore our traditional ways of managing the excess wetlands, but we have to think differently also in the city of what can we do with all this concrete. 
you know uh, you know there are some very interesting concepts coming out uh, in india as well people are talking about replanting or recycling all the mango seeds uh, there are mm. a lot of these initiatives today right like hey dry it up and uh, you know send it to a place and they'll replant it um, yes. you know uh, i know one institution in uh, you know which is an analytics institution so what they did is on my birthday uh, because i'm part of that they sent me a sapling uh, in a small pot right it's such a novel thought right that hey they are leading into it uh, you know so those are a couple of things and today concepts like vertical gardens you know uh, having those concepts coming into your point are those but i think it's still not enough uh, we've not, not reached enough, yeah, yeah it, it needs to uh, and i think that the piece which you spoke about the education piece right the yeah. ecology and the biology programs i think in schools today we don't teach that more right uh, i know in my uh, school days we were like every year we were told hey you have to grow a sapling and bring it right but it doesn't happen that much i don't know you know if you seen that happening now in school and college but to promote that uh, to promote uh, whether it is composting or any of those theses it it's not uh, being done because if you fix those knowledge at a grassroots level as grown ups uh, as we start growing up we remember those we remember our childhood right they say there are childhood traumas but there are childhood good things which we learn which we always take on as we grow up so do you think you know that can be a big game changer as well absolutely you know uh, as you know we do a lot with children so we have this climate change festival we run at the university i don't know that you are aware of last year the theme was reverse so we do it to we do off life you know because we want to make it a joyous environmental festival not a doom and gloom for young children reverse of life had 10000 visitors 8500 were young children and uh, this year we wanted to scale it up to 20 to 30000 in the bopal and bangalore campuses Wow. what we've seen is a few things huh? one is that children respond so well to this joy mm. the second thing is so when we did rivers all the older people who came had seen most of the rivers we had interns from across the country documenting it and they'd seen them in good condition Mm. and none of the not a single water body in the country big or large or big or small stream or ganga or you know brahmaputra that kind of majestic river or tiny pond they throw all polluted it's horrible i mean so when you see it at that scale suddenly at the country you know intern after intern documenting these changes it's quite so kids really responded to that and they all sort of think what can we do and they came up with a lot of ideas of what they could do so i think this is really motivating uh the other thing is we did this set of interviews with urban activists across the country and when i'm saying activists i'm using it loosely it could be somebody who works with schools uh, to help them with environmental education because she is just fascinated with it it could be someone who's actually an activist filing pias it could be someone who is working with um, you know slums and teaching them how to uh, plant things for food all kinds of things but all of them mentioned exactly what you're saying they mentioned that it was something in their childhood that influenced them but what is interesting is it's it's education but a huge amount is exposure to nature and i think that's what we miss in our cities so yeah. what we are trying to do is can schools for instance plant a tree every school should have a large tree some people tree or banyan tree or something like that where classes can be done under the shade of the tree and mm. that i think is what you need you don't need you know so if you do environment the concrete classroom with like a textbook thing and you just have it's one more thing to memorize it is not going to be fun for them i hope you enjoyed this clip from my podcast series called masters decoded the intention of bringing these clips to you is to allow you to understand some key moments of the conversations i've had with my guest i would recommend and highly encourage you to listen to the entire podcast which you can find the link to the podcast in the description below i look forward to you subscribing to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified of all the future clips which we keep releasing every week on this channel